Hi everybody, Russ from the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new, man, do give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, all that good stuff. Now, it's sounded a bit different again. You know, another My Hammers 11. We've had, God knows how many we've had on there. Um, but I believe, I believe Poppy will be our first ever rugby player we've had on. We've had golfers, we've had footballers, we've had athletes, we've had EastEnders actors, we've had Shakespearean actors, we've had darts players. But Poppy will be our first ever rugby player. Let's bring her in. Where is she? And she's even dressed for the occasion as well. There she <laughs> How you doing, Poppy? Yeah, I'm good. I would like to say it's good first choice. Good for well, I thought we, you know, you, I can't go. You know, the, the bar's raised that high now. I can't go any higher. You'll probably be the only rugby player we have had on. How are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Good, 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 good. Um, obviously, the the Six Nations. Obviously, the men's Six Nations kicked off a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the the women's Six Nations kicks off towards the end of March. Um, when does when does training start? You know, will you be in the squad? Probably. Um. <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. No. So uh, at the moment we're still with our club, so I'm still playing in the Premiership with Saracens. Uh, but in two weeks, yeah, about two weeks time, we're actually off to St George's Park to do some training camps. Cool. Um, and then we'll just be in training, yeah, for the for the Six Nations to hopefully try and win the Grand Slam again. Yes, that's what we like, confidence, confidence. And obviously, I mean, last year wasn't a bad year for you, really, was it? Personally, no, it, it was all right? It, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but we had the World Cup got cancelled because of COVID, so, mm. like, it was a bit frustrating because I think if I'd got to go at the World Cup in that sort of form, I'd have done a good job sort of thing, but I've got to keep it going for another year and, and hopefully we have another good year just like last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, being, as you said in the intro video, I think last year you're the current Six Nations player of the, player of the year, uh, the current England player of the year, all-time Premier League try scorer, and nominated for the 2021 World Player of the Year. So yeah, it's not shabby. I've I've seen worse years. I'll be honest. I've seen worse years. <laughs> but there's still there's still room for improvement. I still still got to get my hands on another couple of trophies. I think. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. But, you know, the only downside was question of sport the other week. We've got to bring it oh. up, don't we? <laughs> no, so, yeah, they, uh, they like, prep you before. So he, the guy rang me and he was like, oh, um, you know, we just want to get to know you a bit more and who you support. And they're like, football. And I'm at West Ham. And to all my friends, I literally said, they're going to get me a West Ham um, question. And I was like, I'm pretty confident I can do it. And then it just came and my mind just went blank. And then... <laughs> I was just getting all sweaty and, uh, and I wanted the ground to swallow me up. And then, like, they just carry on um, filming and there was, like, no break in it. And I, like, needed to have five minutes sat in a dark room after that. I was like, no. <laughs> just yeah. to decompress. Just but to decompress. I can't, I can't go back on it now. I just have to hope they invite me back. And, yeah. Yeah. Oh dear. It's typical, was not it? It was Sod's Law, wasn't it? Sod's Law, West Ham question would come up. But you said it's like, you, you, know, yeah, you I know, I can imagine I your know, mind just so goes. <laughs> Oh bless you! Oh bless you! But, but obviously, you know, we see West. We see the West. No pressure. That's probably the. Go on, carry on. I think it's. I think it's a couple of seconds behind, but yeah. there's no um, pressure in my career that's been more more pressure than than that. That was. It was. I reckon once I've done that, I reckon if I needed to drop a goal to win the World Cup, I think I could do it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh bless! It must, yeah. It's just it must be such a terrifying thing, particularly, particularly, you know, when you get to the home and away questions as well. Because not only just West Ham, but obviously, if you want to play home for your own sport and you don't, you fuck that question up. That again, it's like, oh fuck, I don't even know what I'm talking about. You know, it's 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 a uh, particularly after all the accolades you won last year as well. Yeah. So um, that question, they when they showed it in the video, they cut out the five minutes I was um and ah in because obviously. <laughs> It had gone so badly, that first question. I was just like, if I get this wrong, I'm going to look like a right plonker. I was like, please don't get it wrong. And like, I knew it, 100% knew it, because it could literally be no one else. Yeah. But it just over my head. And then when I got it right, I was like, okay, calm down now. You're not too bad. You can do this, sort of thing. Oh, bless. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it must be, yeah. It's, uh, sorry, I could never never imagine, never imagine happening to me, to be honest. But um, in terms of, obviously, we see the West Ham kit. Obviously, the boys are doing all right this year. The boys and the women, the, the women are doing okay as well. Seventh in the league. We'll talk about the women uh, as well um, throughout this this episode. But um, uh, thoughts on how the how the seasons are going for the for the two for the two teams? Yeah, well, I think 
for for the boys if they don't make the top four. I think we're just in and about. We're we're making it, you know, tough for anyone we play against nowadays. So, yeah. um, you know, I hope we can we can send that top four and um, no games easy when you, when you've got to play West Ham nowadays. And then yeah, no. the, for the women, um, a bit of change up, wasn't it? All their managers and stuff, but um, yeah, I just think they've just got to stay in the stay in the prem and just and build from there. Yeah, totally, totally. And as I said, it's, it's great because obviously, you know, I mean, particularly from uh, a, a super a women's super league perspective, obviously, there's been. I mean, the last couple of weeks there's been quite a lot of it on like no, like I say normal telly, but like BBC One and BBC Two, and it's on Talk Sport and stuff like that. That's brilliant for the game. I, I mean, my daughter loves going to the going to the women's women's game. It's fantastic. I, I think it's so much fun. It's really good. Yeah, with the visibility in women's sports nowadays, I think. Covid kind of gave people that excuse to put it on the the back burner and stuff, but now we're getting more TV deals and the rights are going for more and more money and more people are watching it. And I think we had um, a couple of the women's rugby games and then the women's football games in the same week, and they got you know over a million people watching it. Wow. And it. Yeah, so it was like it's pretty impressive. And now that um, those sort of figures and and data is kind of challenging the men's and what the men's get tuned in and stuff and like sky yeah. sports and things like this so it's not doing too badly no definitely i mean also you know the fact that you know, I think what's really cool actually is obviously talking about six na- the women's Six Nations. Obviously, TikTok is sponsoring it now, so you can imagine just all the social engagement, but also you know all the TikToks and things. You are going to have to do silly dances and all that <laughs> shit, aren't you? Just <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. No. That's brilliant. Yeah, no, it's um, yeah, it's interesting one, and then I never thought about it until you know, someone else said it, and they said the the content the quality of the content is going to be so much better and i was like mm. oh yeah that makes sense people are going to be investing into making the, the content and those 10 second videos and just at the fact that um yeah that the money into that and the quality because of that people will then more people will watch it and it will get around to more people because instead of being some blurry connection with some some random garnet like they'll start getting the production will get better and better and more people will be interested because you know in the early days of women's sport quite a lot of the time it wasn't because of the product like the the football or the rugby that was being played it was mm. the fact that the production there was no um the camera angle was awful the quality was awful there was no commentator no, no one wants to watch a, a sports match whatever it is with no commentator because sometimes you don't understand what's happening yeah um, very true you know if there's an injury and someone's down for four minutes say which is happens all the time men's and women's they'll they'll show replays in the men's game they'll have the commentator speaking about the, the goal that like went before and stuff like this but in the women's get in the women's sport it was just blank silence and it mm. just put people off and it was boring so half the battle is making sure that the productions is entertaining because it's yeah no totally and i think it's just i think it's just great because i think in terms of in terms of getting more eyes on it obviously tiktok is so huge that actually you know having that as the platform of choice so to speak for this for the women's six nations is only a great, better good thing for the the sport so uh very very good very very good looking forward to that i so said it kicks off uh scotland or well, england playing scotland away on the 26th on bbc2 it's on bbc2 yeah. fantastic yeah. brilliant love it love it love it um so Back to West Ham. So obviously we spoke, you know, as a West West Ham fan, um, brought up in Norwich. If I remember, if I, if I read, you, read the notes correctly, why West Ham? Why West Ham and not the Canaries? Yeah. So actually, my sister's uh, is a Canaries fan, and um, she has the obviously the Canaries kit, and I get the West Ham. But uh, yeah, I was born in Norwich, but when I was eight years old, I uh, moved to Bournemouth. So I was actually more been. I went to more Cherries games and more down and Southampton as well, and more. Um, around there than than any other team but my yeah. dad was just a lifelong West Ham um, fan and when I was probably about I love like rugby's everything I love rugby sure so, yeah um, my dad got me into like actually went I was a goalkeeper obviously and I went to Southampton trials but luckily I didn't get picked and I actually got rugby so and I can make a living out of it because I definitely tell you this I would never made a living out of playing um, football but uh, he was always the West Ham fan uh, when we watched match of the day just always supporting West Ham and it was in that sort of like just after the millennium I sort of got into football and asked my dad like who do you support what this and that but my sister yeah Norwich fan and I'm a went after my dad and West Ham brilliant brilliant and then from from then on that was it that was it no no there's no deviation no deviation it was West Ham and West Ham was it yeah exactly I kind of like me being a girl I was like oh what's got the prettiest kit what's got the prettiest colours and you can't really go wrong with can you with these two yeah, I mean the yellow just doesn't go, does it? Yeah, no, exactly. Let's be I'm honest. Like, no, 
had some had this awful haircut and I was like, just wouldn't look good with a yellow and green kit. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And, and 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 what are your sort of do you remember what are your earliest memories do you, do you remember you remember sort of being a young young girl and and seeing where and going to west ham or you know what was the earliest obviously your dad's a lifelong hammer as you said um what was do you remember how it how you were first introduced do you remember how was it was it just given the shirt under for a birthday present or was it sort of you know because my daughter she literally from like three days old she was I put her in the playoff trophy, tra- playoff trophy. You know, three days old, so she was like branded like Harry Potter quite early on in her life. So how is how how picture, is that picture framed on the wall? No, no, it just gets brought up when, when she says, "I don't want to go to West Ham." I said, like, "I'm sorry, this is this is your picture. I've shown Colton Cole it, so you have to you have to do it." Um, but how did how did it happen with you? Because I think it's really interesting, particularly on dads and daughters as well, in terms of how that sort of that dynamic works. Yeah, so um, we would essentially, I would just stay up. I think it was an excuse to get up because obviously match the days on so late. I, yeah. think, I didn't really like football at first, but it was an excuse to stay up um, past my bedtime and watch football. And I was like, please, Dad, just let me watch it. Let me watch it. And then every um, weekend, Saturday, Sunday, we'd just be there watching watching the football together. And there wasn't much rugby on TV, um, you know, until it got picked up for, I think it was like the ITV or Channel 4 for the Premiership highlights. Yeah. You couldn't watch rugby really on TV from um, like Premiership games. So um, football is where I watch my sport and I'm just huge into sport. Anything, I watch anything on um, on the TV. So that's, that's kind of where it started. And that's why I think just sat there chatting to my dad about it. Um, also sticker books. I was like really into sticker books. So when I could just... Um, get the footballers stickers and just go down the shop with my quid and spend it on the, the stickers and I just remember that's why one of my players in my team um, my first memory wasn't really from watching him play but just the um, like trying to collect all his stickers and stuff and um, just like legend and they're always shinies weren't they so oh. yeah that's what it kind of it kind of came from and um, but yeah and, and since then still when I go home I watch match of the day with my dad and I actually had to ring him up and, and pass my team through him and, and he, he said yeah I can go with this team and he didn't want to make any changes <laughs> love it i love the fact that you you've asked you've asked your dad as like sort of the litmus <laughs> test is this okay is this okay are we all right here but no it's all good um let's get a few questions and then we'll go into your 11th because you know um right let's have a look uh oh Bert, okay we'll put bernie or uh bernie's asked do you believe it would help women's football if we if you was to play we was to play more games at the london stadiums so obviously they play at dagenham and redbridge yeah. um do you think it would benefit playing at the london stadium more interesting question cool. Yeah, that is a very interesting question. Um, there's two kind of like sides to the coin. So if you went to, you put it like with a double header or uh, mm. anything like that, the men's, uh, like with a, at that stadium or behind the men's game, I think that, yeah, you'd probably get a couple more people to watch it and increase the crowd, but just the atmosphere won't be the, sh- the same because you mm. won't fill it. We play twi- uh, games at Twickenham and it's 80,000 people stadium and when there's only under 10,000, let's say, uh, yeah. the atmosphere is not the same the same it's not it's not as great to view it but if you were to um fill out the stadium at like Daniel Redbridge then the atmosphere would be insane you'd yeah. want to come back and watch it you would you know um the experience of going there to match day and watching the women play and then the buzz yeah just the, the crowd cheering and stuff like that it's just a completely different kettle of fish than a, mm. than a half empty not even remotely full stadium so that's a great show you know, yeah i think that it, it would probably you know, one game we play um, we now as a women's rugby team for England we actually go around the country and travel to try and get more people interested. But also we we go to the stadiums like uh, Sandy Park where it's about fourteen thousand pound uh, fourteen thousand people capacity mm. and we can sell that out. So Brilliant. that this was uh, incredible. Whereas we went to Twickenham, it's one eighth of the the stadium full. So um, yeah, I think y- yes, I know like one game, but not not like more than one a season and yeah. you know you've got to make sure you fill out the stadium just because it, it's awesome to have a stadium as full even if it's 2,000 5,000 I've played in a full 25,000 stadium it was incredible yeah that makes a really good yeah I mean that's that's why I quite enjoy the um it's quite enjoy going to particularly even before they went to Dagenham Redbridge they did it at the um at uh, Rush Green the, the training ground and and there's something special because it's it really feels like 
proper football if that makes sense you know because it's a smaller stadium you're very you're a smaller crowd you're, you're quite close as well um no definitely no that makes pretty that's a really good point yeah as you said if it was i used to do when i when i work on the um we do the youth team games and there's about 200 people there in london stadium it just like it's just weird it just doesn't yeah. work it doesn't work at all almost like pre-covid some of like the covid games you know there's like literally yeah. no one there um right let's get some more questions let's go with oh richard's already asked what position you played in goal there we go um right good question why do football why do you think foot, rugby refs get more respect from players than football blimey um i think that it's a tough one but in, even in rugby, yeah, if you get to push the laws and mm. um, you roll around the floor and you get the call, or you yeah you roll around the floor and it makes somebody look at it for quite a lot of the time, if you roll around the floor long enough, the ref there's like a ref in the um, the TMO, the ref up in like a yeah. box somewhere on his own, he will look at it long enough and you kind of draw your attention. And nowadays that's kind of coming into rugby more and more because you get rewarded for it, mm. so and you don't get punished for it. And I think that the fact that if you said one word to the ref, you know, we've we've seen it recently with ben, Billy Benapola get he's got marked straight back to Yes. He, he literally just I think he queried the question sort of thing. Um you've seen it with Dylan Hartley. Wayne Barnes didn't give no eye that it was the um final of the premiership and the biggest game in his career and he was about to miss the Lions tour because he, he said, Are you cheating ref? and he gave him a straight red. So mm. I think just the fact that they just get away they're allowed to get away with it and they also get the benefit of it so you know they roll around the floor and or they bounce um chat back to the ref and, and they can get away with it and i think that with rugby it's kind of seeping in as well it does come it is coming and then this year has been a lot of conversation about it because of it and that's why the referees are now like no you know stamping mm. it out straight away um and i think that's probably why there's a bit of a difference yeah because they did like they, they, they did sort of bring it in they did try to bring it in football isn't it sort of the 10 yard rule or 10 the 10 meter rule but i think okay i can only remember it being used once i think and they just sort of didn't bother because it otherwise literally every game you'd be like have a throw in on a foul on the goal on the goal line and by the time the players have told the ref where to go it's almost like on the other goal line because it'd be like 10 yards 10 yards 10 yards 10 yards 10 yards i think we've also referees because in in rugby it always seems i mean when i, when I used to play you know you used to you used to call them obviously the referee sir or whatever you know it's like are you sure sir is, that, is, is he meant to be is he meant to, is he meant to be putting his foot there sir you know like playing dumb but it always worked and it was like i just think there was a more it was just definitely a mutual respect between the referees and the players where football is almost like i think football football is football sees referees as um killjoys you know they, they don't let the but actually i think with rugby it's almost i see the referee as part of the game if that makes sense it's almost like they're if, if the if the referee relationship with say the front row is good then the scrums hang it the, the scrums do better if, if it's if it's a bit niggly they the scrums collapse quite a lot or they tw- or they turn and, and it sort of stop starts the game a little bit i mean this is not a fo- this is not a rugby podcast it's a football podcast yeah. but I think there's I think there's a real difference in terms of how and you know the fact is the referees all mic'd up as well that helps I think particularly um I because think that there's also more eyes on football um mm. and obviously football's a much bigger sport across the world than rugby and that just means that when these instances do happen or it, there's a video of it and it goes it goes viral more as in rugby these instances you know they're forgotten yeah. quickly week or they play one game every week whereas footballers are playing multiple yeah. Um, so there's just more minutes and, and more occasion that happens. So it's not that it happens more in football and less in rugby. I just think sometimes that um, just the eyes on football is a lot more. Yeah, no, I agree. Good shout. Good so question, like Rich. Models, yeah. yeah, it's a good question. Oh, very good. Um, it, it, not, not so a hard one now. Are there any West Ham, other West Ham fans in the England dressing room or are they all boring and support Man City and Man United? Um, we have... No other West Ham supporters. However, the hooker, Amy Kane's mum, is a West Ham fan. <laughs> so after the, we played Harlequins at the weekend just gone. And when I came off, um, she shouted to me um, that West Ham had won. And I was like, oh, you West Ham sport? She was like, yeah. And I was like, oh, cool. And then we have um, Liverpool ticket season holder. A lot of Liverpool fans, I'm not going to lie. A lot of Liverpool fans. Um, Holly Aitchison. Sarah Beckett, all up from Liverpool. They've got season tickets. You've got Zoe Harrison to Chelsea, so pretty boring. Marley Pack is a Liverpool fan. So we're actually Liverpool wins probably in the England women's rugby yeah. team. 
No, that's all right. At least, at least you're keeping keeping the faith. <laughs> and obviously, then you got a Norwich fan in there as well. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, and a Norwich fan. Well, <laughs> yeah, just forgot about your twin sister. Don't worry about that. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Right, last last question, then we'll talk, go on to 11. Who's your current favourite West Ham men's player? Oh, he, I did, he did make my team, but he nearly did, but it's Declan Rice. Yeah, um, good shout. Yeah, by far, because I think he's like one of the nicest blokes. Well, he comes across like this because I've never met him, but he comes across like one of the nicest blokes, um, yeah. his personality. And I think also what I like is his relationship with other players in England um, men's side. Like, yeah. they just put aside their club, you know, differences or games like that, and they're just like best mates. And yeah, I like that. And again, I think that's that's a bit similar to like how my my perception of 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 how international rugby is. It's 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 doesn't seem as tribal as as football did. I mean, it's, it's changed now. It seems as you said because it looks like the crop of the England football players have grown up playing in the same year group until they're in the full full for them you know full squad. Whereas it seems with rugby as well, it's not necessarily country first, but it does seem that there's less clicks. I don't know if that's true or not, but. It just seems to me from the outside coming in that when you see all the, you know, when we, I always used to buy the British Lions DVD behind the scenes, all that stuff, and they just seem to be all having a right, right laugh. Um, it doesn't seem to be any sort of like, oh, you play for Harlequins, you play for Saracens, I'm not going to talk to you. Um, is that true or, is I'm, or am I just sort of making a generalisation? I think that it's, it's probably not as true nowadays because of, you know, the salary cap scandal. Which, yeah, you, know, you might have heard about. I think that there's some rivalries and <laughs> that have gone deep down, and they some of them do not get on. I know that for sure. But um, yeah, you know when the Lions is just a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Yeah, because it's like the pinnacle of your career. You can't not go there and and have the best time with the best players in the whole entire world. But yeah, definitely, I don't think at country they get along as much as sometimes they they try and pretend they do. <laughs> Fair enough. Very diplomatic. Last question. Is it true that footballers spend the entire match pretending to be injured whilst rugby players pretend they are not injured? That is so true. That seems so <laughs> true from a, from a, from an from an, an outsider. It does seem that it, it does seem footballers get injured. Whereas, you know, you could have your leg. I mean, I remember once playing a game and a guy broke his leg and he didn't realise until he'd finished the game, you know, and it's like the rugby game. It's like, just like it seems it just seems rugby players are built differently. I'm not sure how to answer this because we are, I am on a football podcast here. So <laughs> you can. We can slag them off. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. It's um, like I said earlier with the whole, it's part of the, it's, you don't want to say it, but it's part of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, going for the diving and getting this. It's just part of it. And I think that in sometimes in rugby, there's, diff- there's also occasions where cheating is okay. And they always say that it's not cheating if you get away with it, is it? Yeah. So, um, yeah, especially as a back row, that's kind of, you know, the aim to get to cheat as much as you can, but not of get course, one yeah, one. yeah, so sticking your leg out so the so the scum off trips over it and all yeah. that, yeah, 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 yeah. We've all been there, <laughs> we've all been there, we've all been we've all been tripped up sometime in our life. Right, let's go and talk about let's, let's talk about football now. Let's talk about your 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 eleven. It's been okay by your dad, so we're all right. Yeah. That's good. Okay. It's been okay by then. So we'll go through the players one at a time. So we'll start off in goal. Who is in goal for the Poppy eleven? Yeah, so it starts with uh, Robert Green, and this is also because he's obviously a bit of a legend at Norwich as well. So um, yes, I I liked him because of that already, and then yeah, when he 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 just was was great in goal, and he's a bit of a like um, oh, I don't know if this is the right word, but like a lovable, just like a lovable rogue. I found he was very unusual. Yeah, he's a very unusual footballer in that he's not really a football. He doesn't he doesn't act like a footballer as yeah. well. I mean, the story. Yeah. yeah, well, the stories we've had is like he will sit at the back and would read the Financial Times and stuff like that, oh, rather than, not. well, no, but but rather than getting involved in like you know the car yeah. game or whatever, he'll be doing that. And um, yeah, it's uh, but an incredible um, incredible worker, incredible trainer as he's well. He's got to be kind of a little bit clever because he obviously ended up with Chelsea and um, doing a John Terry lift in the trophy, didn't he? When he didn't yeah. Do I love the fact it's still his Twitter picture as well, you know, just him just holding holding the cup like that. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Love him. And he's got a wonky finger as well, which is even brilliant. Um, I think that was when you, I think that, that picture was when uh, 
uh, everyone used to sing uh, as England's number six, England's oh. England's number six, which I always thought was great. Um, and he stayed, you know, he ended up staying when he went down and uh, got us back into the Premier League and and stuff like that. Oh, I love it. I love it. Big fan of, of old Greeno. Right, let's move on. Let's go to your your left back, your left back, your nemesis, really. Now, after the uh, question yeah. of sport incident. Yeah. So um, I've gone with Aaron Creswell mainly because I have to apologise. <laughs> him personally if I ever saw him because uh, yeah it was a question on the pitch around in question of sport and I unfortunately froze at the wrong moment um, even though everyone in my team looked at me because they knew I was a West Ham fan um, yeah but he's played an incredible amount of games for West Ham um, you know a crazy amount of assists so yeah it has to be Aaron Crosswell yeah and he's sort of like had a renaissance hasn't he he's sort of like midway so maybe two or three years ago he was like I think of, oh he's, he's not the player he was when we signed him from Ipswich which was obviously very close to Norwich as well so there's a there's a connection there um but he he sort of I don't know he's sort of this fountain of youth he's apart from obviously the game on the weekend he didn't play very well but usually his last few couple of seasons he's played very well he's obviously hasn't been injured or hasn't you know thrown his back into a pole and fractures his oh, yeah. tailbone or he did yeah jesus fair play to him uh but yeah top man old cressy's big fan of cressy uh right let's go with your first center back then yeah so um i went with winston reed when he reads yeah top man. so um i just i loved him anyway because he's kind of good looking i thought anyway but <laughs> which you shouldn't judge a footballer on that but anyway but um, the fact that he just scored like important goals um, and also you kind of felt like he'd left a long time ago but obviously he didn't um, but yeah I just thought he was solid at the back and when he was fit he did a good job for us yeah very true one of those players who I think yeah it was a, and again sort of I think it happens quite a lot of our players. They get injured, and when they get injured, it's just like I think he got injured at the wrong time and he just never really recovered from an injury, did he? And yeah. um, it's a shame that we sort of obviously we had to let him go. Um, but uh, I think he's, I think he's back in New Zealand. I think at the moment, fair play to him. I'd rather be there than here at the moment, blowing a gal in Hornchurch at the moment. I tell you, um, right? Okay, so we've got Cresswell, we've got Winnie Reid. Who's your next centre back? Okay, so this one is Jilly Flatty. And yes. that is because, yeah, well, FA Cup final, when I went to go watch it at Wembley, um, and after the game, obviously a couple of beers later, I was walking down Wembley to, uh, is it, what is it, the box or that? Do you know the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but basically the bars. Yeah. And she was behind <laughs> us, and we were belting out. Um, chance we were singing we were just she was just awesome all the photos all the videos i'm pretty sure i deleted half the videos because the next day when i woke up and i realized i'd met her i was so embarrassed but yeah <laughs> um she's a leader she leads from the front just her whole um when she went on the media talking about mental health and stuff like that just like hats off to her the courage that took and yeah you know when um west ham got their first place in the women's super league um she's been there since then and um mm. a real rock at the back yeah, 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 very sort of old, old school mentality, you know, the, the, a bit like a bit like Craig, not Craig Dawson at the moment at West Ham. She's she'll put a body on the line and she'll and she'll fight for that club. And uh, yeah, I know she's uh, Jenny's a great person, and uh, I love it. And I love the fact we've included some some of the women in here because it's um, they 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 need a bit more prominence if that makes sense i think uh to be fair because they're actually smashing it um in terms of uh like social media and stuff and like twitter and stuff as well doing brilliant right okay so we've got cresswell we've got reed we've got flaherty who's going to be playing on the right back position yeah so i found this actually the hardest position because um i, I struggled to think of anyone that um really stood out um but i went because of he came for the youth system and he was like a product and if probably if we didn't get relegated he would have stayed but glenn johnson oh what could have been what could have been with glenn in it say it was it was part of that whole period wasn't it where we sort of had players and and they'd, they'd start off and they'd start playing for us and we'd go oh he's really good how long till he fucks off and goes to chelsea <laughs> or liverpool and it just yeah. seemed to be you know if we had all them 
it had that time where we had Joe Cole and we had Glenn Johnson and, and Defoe and Carrick and Lampard and da 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 da. And, you know, it was it would have been such a an amazing time uh, potentially. But uh, yeah, Glenn Johnson obviously went on had a great career at Chelsea and Liverpool and Stoke. Um, but uh, didn't play that many games for us because I, I, I thought he'd, I, I was when I looked I was like Glenn Johnson that's a great shout. And he's one of his players that you think was around for a fair bit. I think he only played like a dozen games for us, but his impact because he was so he came on he was so like he was like the, the modern day fullback, weren't he? Really, he was a nowadays fullbacks. You look at Trent Alexander Arnold, um, Robertson. Um, Ben Johnson as well. You know, these guys aren't necessarily defenders outright. Their first job is to attack. And he had like raw pace, Glenn did, and was a really good player. Really, really good player. And he's good. He's good on talk sport. I like him on talk sport. Uh, yeah, 16 times he played for us. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. But made such an impact. Right, okay. Nice back four. Nice back four. Good start. Yeah. Right, let's go into midfield. Who? Let's go to the. Well, you start. You, you pick. You pick. Who's next in midfield? Okay. So. It kind of goes on nicely um, for this one, so pretty similar to Glenn Johnson as well. Uh, but I went with Joe Cole, but luckily he came back to us. Yes. So, and uh, <laughs> finished off some business. So yeah, uh, Joe Cole was uh, in there. I think he was just he was again a little like like Glenn Johnson, so just a different breed. You know, when he had that ball, um, just so quick and just attacking minded, and just also you wouldn't want to meet him down in dark alley, would you? So yeah. Not with that. Not with that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Not with that haircut, bless him. But yeah, no, I know what you mean. And I, I, I like players. I call them boomerang players. The players that go away and come back again. And and he did. And and he thought he had unfinished business. And um, I mean, I think he's a. I think Joe is a fantastic. Um, you know, analyst on BT Sport. Whatever. He's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, and and <sighs> one day you never know. One day, could you imagine? He could be. One that we got, we, we seem to have every other bloody ex-player back on our yep, on our really. coaching staff at the moment. So uh, come on, come home, Joe. Come home, Joe. Be lovely. Right. Okay. We got Joe Cole. Who's next? Yeah. So um, Kate Longhurst. So yes. Again, I didn't know this, and I didn't know this, but she's a lifelong um, West Ham fan as well. Mass, so, massive fan. Massive. Was- yeah, I thought that was epic because, um, like, to sign for the team that you supported since, obviously, clearly a, a young child, and especially after the great career she had as well before she signed for West Ham. Um, mm. Yeah, I think it's awesome. Like, it must be so epic. And I think, yeah, like, we, we spoke earlier about this very. She doesn't score many, but look how much it means to her. And, um, yeah, yeah. she's she definitely, especially, like, for, for the West Ham ladies as well, that role that she plays in that midfield um, with Gilly as well, I think. They're just two huge players for the ladies' side. Yeah, and uh, you're totally right. She is, it's just, it's sort of, and it's all lead, it'll lead on nicely to our next player we talk about in a minute. But, you know, being sort of a lifelong fan, playing for your, not your girlhood club, your girlhood club, boyhood club, yeah, it must be a girlhood club. Um, and obviously, we've had a dad on, we've had Kate both, we've had them both on the channel. Um, obviously, her dad's a massive West Ham fan as well. And, yeah, to score against Tottenham as well, um, that goal. And, you know, and if you haven't seen it, anyone, go and go and Google it. When Kate scores, she runs up. That's a picture of her running up to the camera saying, have some of that, because she equalised in the 90th minute against Spurs or something, away to Spurs. It's a really good, uh, really good goal. And uh, just her reaction, she made, she was her own meme. She created her own meme very, very quickly. But, uh, yeah, big fan of Kate. And we've had her on the channel. So if you guys want to see, go back and listen to her, My Hammers 11. And uh, and she she was it was very very good very early on I think she picked she, herself she did uh, I don't do you know what I don't think she did well, I don't think I, sh- I think <laughs> I, I think my dad picked us I think dad a dad picked Kate I think we should he has to really do, but um, but I don't think she did no 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 um, right okay so speaking of yeah that was girlhood club let's talk about boyhood clubs then yeah so she, she can be Mrs West Ham and this can be Mr yeah. West Ham so we're gonna go with uh, Mark Noble and just you know yeah. The emotion he plays with, and um, the fact that he can just bounce back. He wasn't playing so well, and then bounce back. Um, and yeah, you get, when he's on the team sheet, you just know he's going to give it all, don't you? And he just the I reckon like the amount of respect he has in the dressing room and the players around him, probably just his presence. He wouldn't need to play in in many games. Just his presence and the the leadership role he he has at West Ham, probably sort of money can't buy that sort of stuff. No, no, definitely, and I mean, I, I mean, when we talk about um, 
Mark, I always talk about. Obviously, during lockdown, I was still at the I was still at the club, and I was still obviously I was still obviously working throughout the whole lockdown. But during obviously, I was I was playing, I was doing my stuff during the games, and I was fortunate enough to watch all the games during lockdown. And um, we was we played Chelsea, and we and Yama, Yama scored a, a last minute winner. And Mark wasn't in the squad. Mark was sitting where the disabled. He was in the auxiliary squad, which basically sat in the disabled area because that was two meters apart from each other. And he was watching it as if I was watching the game. And I know we say he's a fan and da da da, but actually watching him watching the game as a fan was a really and I was I was gutted I didn't record it because it'd have been great to use as footage. But it was absolutely brilliant watching him kicking every ball, shouting at the ref. And when Yama scored the, the goal, the winning goal, he sort of like he jumped over the barrier and he could have quite injured his quite possibly injured his foot. But um yeah he's um it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a strange one. It's gonna be a strange one next season. It's gonna be a yeah. strange one. Um but yeah and as you said I think he does have a fantastic bond with the club you know the senior management the board and things like that and and actually as a nice segue we're gonna be talking about that tomorrow in tomorrow's show mark Noble, what next there we go there's a little promo there we go so that's what we're going to talk about after obviously he retires at the end of this season there we go little plug um but no yeah he's top man top man mark and uh would grace many am i hammers at that's true right so we've got joe we've got kate longhurst we've got we've got miss we've got mrs west ham we've got mr west ham who we got next yeah, so um, this one, it also kind of pained me to put him in, but I think the fact that it was just so exciting when he got the ball um, and it has to be Dimitri Payet. Yeah. Best, be, technically, best player I've ever seen at West Ham. Yeah, and I actually kind of like that haircut as well. <laughs> not bad, that's not bad. But yeah, just the, 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 the ability to take players on, cross the ball in, curl them in the top corner. Mm. Um Scored a, scored a fair few and uh, I think if I was when he was playing if I was a better man you'd have to a better woman you'd have to thank you you'd be betting on West Ham win and Pyatt score or Pyatt assist so yeah um, he was a great player just special. didn't stay around for very long yeah, he was a very special player, weren't he? He was one of those players. I think now we can sort of, I think the dust has settled a little bit, so we can sort of appreciate what he was. You know, there was a lot of ang- anger when he left and stuff. And but you know, I still think that he, because obviously that last season at the bowling, everyone talks about with such sort of, you know, um, such memory in terms of they so high they sort of think about a season so highly. If it wasn't for that man, I don't think we'd have had that season. Um, yeah. So you wouldn't have had those memories that people those lasting memories of of uh, you know the, the goal against Crystal Palace or you know when we was away in the goal against Man United or Blackburn and you know there was, he was a he was a special player. Um, West Ham fans love players like that who get you off your seat, and he did it. And they're, they're he's ent- and we want to be entertained. Same as same as rugby, same as any sport. You go to as a sport you go to be entertained don't you so he was an entertainer so no nah, top man loved him i thought he was a really good he was obviously a phenomenal player best player I ever saw or where clarence most no technically the best player not the best player but technically the best player um right okay let's go striker first forward who's your first forward yeah so obviously I spoke before about you know my stickers and my panini stickers uh and collecting them, but there was one guy that I was like, who is this? Because, again, he doesn't look like a footballer, does he? I was like, who is this? I was like, Dad, who is this? Um, it's obviously Paolo Di Canio, so uh, he's probably, the to me, when I was a kid growing up then, he was the like he was just West Ham. Um, whenever I watched him, I thought about him, he, and I thought about West Ham, it was always just Di Canio, um, just his passion. Uh, just like that Italian, you know, that just Italian is part of his passion. And yeah, um, he was just to me what West Ham was when I was a grown kid growing up. So I had to put him in my team. I didn't actually really see him or watch him. Um, but yeah, I just knew how much my dad loved him and he was a ledge. So yeah. He was the team. And he was a, and he was an imperial leather model, wasn't he? He was he was in he was uh he was the first one I can remember of West Ham like players who 
people knew about outside of football. So like I my, have nodded, but I have no idea what you're on about. Like, so he was, yeah, don't you know? He was so, so yeah. So, so he in, I think it must have been around that time that he was wearing the feeler shirt. He was like, um, he was, he did a, a commercial for Imperial Leather, you know, the bar, you know, the soap company. It's yeah. company. Go and Google it afterwards. You go and watch it on YouTube. Right. And he's, he's in a bar, and he's like, oh, you know, she's the woman's in a bath. It's very, it's very like, oh, it's very sort of 1990s, really. It's in the bath the bubble bath and he walks in like just coming off the pitch the football pitch is it a bit like, is it a bit like joe hart and the head and shoulders no it's more seductive oh okay. <laughs> paladin canio this is the this is, this is the weirdest internet search imperial leather <laughs> <laughs> where is it um i remember i can show you a picture <laughs> yeah okay, i can show you this bit or oh, can i yeah yeah i can just checking he's not yeah, just checking what rude right save it's him it's after nine o'clock yeah we're okay. yeah we're okay i'm not bothered about that uh yeah, let me get the picture <laughs> oh dear, i was not expecting to say to save this picture to my desktop um but anyway let me show you um where is it where is it where is it um we'll bring it up in a minute but you know he did an imperial lever advert it's very funny and uh, she comes in and she's all like um oh, so why is it not downloading anyway i'll share my screen i'll share it he's like yeah why uh, where is it let's go full screen uh let's share it yeah there we go share share screen so this was uh, let me show it. who is it so so yeah so that 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 was the end of the that's the end of the video oh. <laughs> yeah so she walks so the lady's in the bath bubble bath and paula walks in just literally strips off and he goes andes or something like that and then it's like imperial leather anyway oh, <laughs> i know oh, i know i know you can get away with that then days where was that 2000 2000 2003 i was in 2003 yeah so that's so yeah so fair play and he was like the first one like my my, my nan who knew who paolo de Cano was do you know what i mean because of like he he was had some sort of notoriety it was quite funny um <laughs> link in the chat for the De Canio advert yeah exactly yeah um <laughs> exactly ken um so yeah paolo absolute legend of a man so and then we've got one last player poppy who's the last piece of this poppy puzzle yeah so um i've gone with antonio and that is because yeah that celebration wow you know i was like what is he doing and then yeah to get a cardboard cut out of himself the amount of um effort that must have taken to, to do that and i just think that People doubted him, but he came back and now, you know, to hold the ball up, players play off him, score his goals. There's no one better, yeah. I think, than than him. It takes a real it, it takes a real sense of confidence to yeah. do that, doesn't it really? It's like when you became the when you became the Premier League, you know, the premiership try scorer of all time, did you have a cardboard cut over yourself? No, you just took the you just scored the try and that's it. You knew yeah. you were the all time Premier League try scorer of all time. Not him, he has to get his <laughs> Dirty dancing, you know, like I had the time of my life. I love the fact that the commentators as well were trying to work it out, and they were like, "What is happening?" And even afterwards, they were like, "Was it because of this, or was it because of that?" No it was sure. just weird. It was just weird. I think also because of the fact was, you know, it was the first proper game back as well. So there was, there was fans in the stadium. We had the lights. It was a weird game. It was in the summer, so it wasn't really dark as well. And it was just a very straight. It was a bit like pre-season. It felt like as well. And him to do that, and him to, you know. Oh, just yeah, bizarre. But he brought. But what I like about Antonio, he's he he brought he brought back you know the the sort of celebration thing. Celebrations got quite boring, um, and he sort of brought them back. You know, he did the did the um, you know the Homer Simpson thing. He he stroked the carpet. He did the Macarena. He did the you know. And I, I love I love that. You should be able to do a celebration. You should be able to enjoy yourself well, when you score of, a goal. The amount of pressure sometimes on the on the guys and stuff, you've got to enjoy those moments because sometimes they just don't happen. You know, you can go through ruts and you can go through, um, you know, troubles and then you've got to make sure that you enjoy those highs because there's lows quite a lot of the time. Oh, Christ, yeah. Like, unfortunately, so, yeah, to see, them, to see them enjoying himself and then, yeah, scoring a few goals and... For West Ham, I think he can celebrate as much as he wants as long as he keeps scoring. Of course, indeed, and and that's the team. And there's a team. I tell you what, that ain't bad. That ain't bad, Poppy. It's been okay by 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 Daddy Cleal, so That's all right. We're happy. He's happy as well. So that's all good. That's all good. Uh, 
Boppy, it's been it's been brilliant, brilliant chatting to you. I said forty five minutes, literally five oh, seconds to go. Up. I'm that good, um, but I really appreciate your time and uh, and good luck. Good luck. We'll all be tuning on if you get selected for the squad. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much. <laughs> And thanks for the questions, whoever the guys are that sent the questions. Yeah, loads of questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some good questions. They always come up with some good questions. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'll kick you out. You don't have to worry about leaving. I'll kick right. you out. So don't worry. <laughs> cheers. Cheers, 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 cheers. Let me just kick Boppy out so she knows. There, she's done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. Uh, that was great. Yeah, it was really nice. Lovely, lovely, lovely chat. Uh, what a lovely, what a lovely lady Poppy is. As I said, she's uh, current Six Nations Player of the Year. She's England Player of the Year, leading all-time Premier League try scorer, and nominated for World Player of the Year in 2022, 2021 as well. Uh, Fifty caps for England. I think she's captain to come to the country as well. Um, and also, she is. She'll be obviously the Six Nations kicks off March the twenty sixth. Uh, on BBC Two, so make sure you check it out and get behind her. Follow her on Twitter. That's you know she's we got we got a proper you know England rugby superstar uh, who's a West Ham fan. So let's get behind her. Great that she put a couple of the women in there as well with Jilly and Kate as well. And as I said, we'll be back tomorrow tomorrow lunchtime, hopefully. Um, obviously the report came out the other the other day about Mark. Um, you know, talks about what he's going to do next. So we talk about that a bit more, in a bit more detail. We'll do it at lunchtime tomorrow. Mark Noble, what next? Obviously, coming to the end, a few months left of his West Ham days, playing days, what's going to happen afterwards? Uh, obviously, your reports today um, that he might be moving upstairs, potentially, and much others. Um, what we got here? Last, have I missed Bills? My, no, Bills is going to be this week. We had to cancel it, so I'm probably doing it this week. So it'll probably be out maybe Friday, Kent, but you will know because you follow um, you follow the channel, you hit the bell notification, so you know exactly when the content is out. Nice to have someone different. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I thought thought probably be great. As soon as I found out, I knew she's a West Ham fan. As soon as I saw she fucked up that question about Cresswell, I thought let's get her on and have a giggle about that. What a lovely girl, exactly. What a lovely girl, indeed. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Simon, good afternoon, evening to you. Right, everyone. Plenty of time. You can go back and have a cup of tea and uh, and chill out for the rest of the day and chill out the rest of the evening. Um, and I'll be back twelve thirty tomorrow. So uh, take care and stay safe. Wash those hands. Get those jab appointments as always. Uh, I like to thank all of our members personally at the end of each show. So take care. Stay safe. Love lots of love. Bye. Yeah,